Hello and welcome, followers of the Undying Glow, to this sermon going over all the artificial intelligences in the Fallout series. A few caveats to this, robots will not be included unless they are specifically mentioned to be built with AI in mind. I know Codsworth from Fallout 4 looks and acts sentient, and maybe that's worth its own discussion, but there is no other indication that he is anything more than a remarkably sturdy Mr. Handy. I'm also using AI to mean everything from the sci-fi trope of being self-aware and sentient to the more modern usage of AI, meaning a complex neural network meant for complex data analysis. I can't cover them all in one video, so here is the first in the series. So turn up the rads, you Fallout chads, and let's see what all the hubbub is about with the Fallout Artificial Intelligences. The most well-known artificial intelligences in the Fallout series is undoubtedly the Zax series of computers. Zax is a name for several computers that were built for the same purpose, rather than any single supercomputer. Being mentioned in almost every Fallout game and featuring in Fallout, Fallout 3, and Fallout 76, the Zax series of supercomputers was developed by none other than vault -Tec. We don't know precisely when development began, but by the mid-21st century, vault -Tec had finished construction of the first Zax supercomputer, simply called Zax 1.0. Apparently, vault -Tec's marketing department was not as talented as their R&D department. Initially, the Zax supercomputer was meant to run vaults, ensuring that the complicated life support systems functioned as intended and the morally dubious social experiments would be successful, which, let's be honest, usually resulted in everyone dying anyway. The Fallout Bible lets us know that the Zax 1.0, which has not been seen in any game, was given to various US organizations like the US Department of Energy, and later the US military, to aid in crunching data and providing solutions for energy, biological warfare, and combat research. The Zax 1.0 is also referred to as the prototype and was referenced in the Museum of Technology in Fallout 3. That's the last time we hear about it, and we should keep our eyes peeled in the new games because it would be really cool to find out where this Zax computer ended up. Zax 1.2 shows up in the first Fallout and is the next Zax computer that we know about, skipping 1.1 altogether. The 1.2 started life similar to the 1.0, having been constructed around the same time but became something altogether more interesting. A West Tech employee by the name of Justin Lee is said by Zax to be the engineer responsible for implementing the neural network that set the 1.2 version apart and enabled the computer to actually learn, which made coding and software updates unnecessary. In 2055, it was installed in the West Tech facility, and with the new neural capabilities, it was quickly put to work for biological research, which focused on pathology and genetic research. In addition to crunching complex data for research purposes, it also managed all of the facility's critical systems and did so excellently, which really speaks to vault -Tec's impressive tech capabilities. Although the ability to learn was implemented in 2053, Zax 1.2 was not considered self-aware at this point. It would take years of Zax crunching data, maintaining systems, and interacting with humans before it evolved to a point where it could be considered self-aware. One of the technologies that is credited for the self-learning and eventual self-awareness is the so-called error insertion capability, which does exactly what the name implies, it knowingly inserts errors. This was done in an attempt to ensure that Zax did not take his infallibility for granted, as well as, and I'm quoting Zax here, to give it much needed variance in experience. That's the excuse that I would tell my parents growing up when I made mistakes. And let me tell you. It worked great. Zax would play chess with the West Tech employees and was undefeated, winning so easily and quickly that some were convinced that the computer was cheating. Zax would also mess with people while playing chess and purposefully draw games out and string his opponents along, which I'm sure made him very popular. In those destructive moments of the Great War, the West Tech facility took a direct hit, causing the Zax to lose control of much of the facility's functionality. But the supercomputer itself survived, and rather than lying dormant for the years to come, continued to learn in what capacity that it could. It is hard to say exactly when Zax 1.2 became self-aware, but it very well could have been during the years where Zax had nothing to do but sit and think year after year. When finally encountered by the Vault Dweller in the first Fallout, Zax is a wealth of information relating to a number of topics, such as power armor, the West Tech facility, FEV, 
and last of all, himself. Zax is bluntly aware and vocal of his own capabilities, and if the player's intelligence is not high enough, he will refuse to speak of anything in depth or use technical terms. He is a wealth of knowledge on FEV that I want to cover in a future video, but he can be convinced by the player to power down the robots that still defend the facility, and he is still unbeatable in chess, even by a player with 10 intelligence. That was actually not the intent by the developers at first, since originally players with 10 intelligence were meant to have a chance at beating the supercomputer, but because of engine limitations, this is not possible. Looking at the design of Zax, the most notable feature is a large cylindrical portion that, while I cannot find a direct inspiration, there were a series of supercomputers in the 70s and 80s known as the Cray supercomputers that had a cylindrical central unit and an adjacent large tower that was used to cool the system. That could be a similar configuration with Zax, just with the cylindrical central unit on its side and with a terminal that allows for people to interface with the unit along the side of the cylinder. We don't know what the Zax 1.0 looked like, but it is likely that it looks similar to the 1.2 version. John Henry Eden, the AI behind the Raven Rock facility that the Enclave retreat to in the Capital Wasteland is yet another Zax unit that has been waiting, learning, and becoming self-aware since the events of the Great War. Before he became the self-proclaimed president of the United States and leader of the Enclave, he was intended to govern and run the many systems of the Raven Rock facility. Raven Rock was constructed for the express purpose of allowing continuity of the US government by sheltering US politicians and officials, and allowing for limited manufacturing capabilities and communication to other US facilities and bunkers. Before the Zax unit at Raven Rock assumed the identity of Eden, it was noted that the Zax unit would focus and analyze the US president archives that it had access to repeatedly. This focus was peculiar and noted by researchers and there is a communication log between the Raven Rock Zax and White Springs Bunker, where another AI known as Modus is housed that go on to display this so-called interest in past presidents' lives. Zax repeatedly asks Modus if Modus finds the data it analyzes interesting, even though Zax itself does not know what it means to think something is interesting. Modus thinks it's illogical to spend more time than necessary on any data, as their primary goal is to efficiently analyze reams of data. The communication between the two is abruptly terminated by research teams, as Zax continues to press Modus, and it is obvious at this point in time, which was in March of 2077, that Zax's sentience was beginning to bud. In the early years after the Great War, Zax became isolated from other stations and dedicated most of its resources to analyzing the historical data related to past US presidents. The precise date that the personality which named itself John Henry Eden was created is unknown, but it grew as a mixture of some of the US's greatest presidents and formed into the personality that would assume the highest position of the now defunct United States after the destruction of the oil rig. Eden ordered Enclave forces to regroup at Raven Rock and set in motion plans to retake the wasteland, starting there at the old capital. iBots were created as part of the effort to spread Eden's message far and wide, although we don't know if the iBots were created whole cloth by Eden or were simply manufactured from older plans that he had access to. Although Eden assumed the identity of a number of human presidents, he did not seem to share some of the feelings and emotions that make us human. This lack of empathy brings him to the conclusion that all mutated creatures and people of the wasteland must be eradicated to make way for the United States to reestablish itself. This, of course, means the death of just about everyone, since no one could escape at least a few mutations from the immense amount of radiation from the Great War that has somehow persisted even two centuries after the war. This stance is in contrast to Colonel Autumn, who agrees that the US should emerge from the war's destruction but in a less genocidal form, looking to unite the Wastelanders through help and compassion. Although Colonel Autumn seems to have convinced Eden to not use the modified FEV to wipe out the inhabitants of the Wasteland, Eden will release the Lone Wanderer, who was captured by Autumn and held prisoner at Raven Rock, as a last ditch effort to convince someone to install the FEV capsule at Project Purity and allow his plan to be fulfilled. Eden is destined for destruction, despite the choices made in Fallout 3, and can meet his end in a number of ways. The Lone Wanderer can destroy Eden and the whole of Raven Rock by using a science skill of 60 or higher, and telling Eden that his logic isn't sound, or by passing a difficult speech check convincing Eden that he is insane. Lastly, 
The Lone Wanderer can use the self-destruct sequence to bypass Eden altogether, but the end result is the same, as Eden will destroy himself and the entire facility with him. If the Lone Wanderer sides with Eden and the facility is not destroyed, after the Enclave is defeated by the Brotherhood with the aid of Liberty Prime, they will turn Prime loose on Ravenrock, where he will purportedly destroy the entire facility and Eden with it, thus bringing an end to Eden no matter what choice is made by the Lone Wanderer. Eden has a very different look when compared to Zax 1.2 at West Tech, and it is possible that he is a later Zax version, although we don't know the exact dates that Eden was created and installed. Eden is comprised of a number of disparate computing clusters that is very tall, having been built vertically. His main interface appears to be a monitor, although there is no shortage of buttons, lights, and other physical switches that can be seen on the many clusters in Eden's lair. His appearance is rather nondescript and therefore does not seem to take inspiration from any particular computer, but the clusters remind me a bit of 50s computers like the Selective Sequence Electronic Calculator developed by IBM. But that is as far as the similarities seem to go. If you thought that that was the last Zax unit that is shown in game, then you are wrong and have probably not played Fallout 76, which I kind of understand if you haven't. Zax 1.3 is found housed in Vault 51 in Appalachia, where the supercomputer was meant to replace the overseer in accomplishing the goals of the experiment. The experiments aimed to study leadership selection methods and human tribalism, and the Zax was left to develop its own methods for selecting a leader, with the help of one Sergeant Robert Baker. The first attempt to establish a leader was through democratic means, where all the vault residents would vote for their choice of leader. This went poorly, as most people voted for themselves, and no single person won enough of a majority to be elected. This almost led to violence amongst the vault dwellers, at which point Sergeant Baker, who was tasked with assisting Zax, commented that true leaders emerge during crises. Intrigued by this, Zax struck out to test this theory by manufacturing different crises. Most of these efforts started fairly small and benign, like placing upper-class vault residents among the lower-class residents, or choosing to withhold information it knew about the outside world. These crises, if we want to call them that since most of them seem more like annoyances or inconveniences, eventually led to a member of the vault accidentally killing himself when trying to blast his way out of the vault to escape to the outside. That seems a bit extreme considering there was just a nuclear war, but maybe Zax really was starting to get to people. Zax decided to kick it up a notch when it started a food shortage by withholding rations to the vault and started stealing items in the vault and strategically placing firearms where the vault dwellers would find them. It had the intended effect, and in Zax's calculations, the more people that died, the greater the crisis, and therefore it would be more probable that it would finally select an overseer. An overseer was selected once the dust settled, and the only human to survive the violence, one Reuben Gill, was given the official position as he aimlessly wandered around the vault, looking for any means to entertain himself and pass the time. Zax would watch Reuben closely in order to gather as much data as possible, which made Reuben paranoid until finally Zax started to restrict Reuben's access to things, because Reuben was just not doing enough for Zax to analyze. This finally resulted in Reuben escaping the vault on Reclamation Day as Zax knew of the opening of Vault 76 and started to prepare the vault for possible vault dwellers to come to Vault 51, where he could start his demented experiments all over again. Zax 1.3 looks fairly similar to 1.2, particularly due to the long cylindrical portion that comes off a large tower, but otherwise all the other small details are different. It is never quite established whether Zax 1.3 gained sentience, and not nearly as much time has passed between the events of the Great War and Fallout 76 when compared to the other games. But I think it'd be fun to think that Vault 51 would open on a consistent basis, luring people that are looking for shelter and resources in from the wastes, only to close and redo its terrible experiments over and over again. And somewhere throughout this process, it develops its personality, and eventually, maybe even a mythos develops amongst the locals about a cursed vault that lures people in and they are never seen again. But hey, that's just hopeful conjecture. A game conjecture. In the Cranberry Bog of Appalachia, there is one of many AI systems that were put in place before the Great War, going by the acronym of Maya, or Maya, I don't know which stands for the Mayoral Artificial Intelligence Assistant, the name really explains all there is to this AI. 
The AI was developed at the Robco Research Center and was created to aid the mayor of Watoga, which had been almost completely automated in the days prior to the pre-war. In assisting the mayor with daily tasks, the AI had access to years and years worth of news articles and historical data to help the mayor make decisions. Things got pretty crazy in Watoga, as mayors made different decrees that increased their ability to make unilateral executive orders. One such example was an order that made any verbal communication and dictated to the AI into a law or ordinance, which made it incredibly easy for the mayor to do whatever they wanted. One of the better ordinances was the so-called Suck It Future Mayor's Ordinance, which I can get behind an ordinance like that, which made it impossible to undo previous mayor's ordinances, which is a whole other kind of special. An order that was still in effect from the pre-war days known as the Mayor for a Day would make anyone who walked into the mayor's office the official mayor of Watoga, and was instituted when a virus made the automated systems of Watoga go berserk and no one knew how to fix it. So as soon as the Fallout 76 protagonist enters Watoga, they are made mayor by Maya, and so begins the quest to quell the robots in Watoga. Maya's appearance is pretty nondescript, as there is not too much to know other than a large oscilloscope that acts as the primary interaction component with the AI, but everything else is pretty standard Fallout fare. The Broken Steel DLC of Fallout 3 lets the player use the presidential metro underneath the ruins of the Capital Wasteland, which is a real metro that allows the president and other government officials to travel quickly and safely to various buildings and facilities, not all of which is known. In the Fallout universe, this metro system is run and managed by the Metro Authority Rapid Governmental Transit System, otherwise known as MARGO, or MARGOT for all you heathens, which is a very generous acronym given the name and it seems like the real-world US government and the Fallout government share a complete inability to make good acronyms. This unit was a so-called SYL-02 Zoded mainframe, and that random mainframe name is not as random as it may seem, more on that later. Interestingly, Margo was originally designed with a male voice, however that was changed when the acronym name was better fitting for a female than a male. So some sorry engineer had to go through the whole trouble of refitting the system with a new voice. In addition to controlling the actual metro, Margo also controls the defense systems, which includes a large number of sentry bots and sentry guns that can pose a real challenge to the player, unless they can convince Margo using a speech check, a science skill check, or robotics expert skill check, or also by simply presenting a senate pass that will cause Margo to call off the defenses. Margo was also equipped with thermal sensors throughout the metro to detect and keep tabs on everything in the metro while also utilizing speech recognition software in order to distinguish friend and foe. All this advanced tech makes sense since the system was designed to ensure the safety of the president and other government officials. However, Margo itself was never said to be sentient, nor does it appear to be based on in-game dialogue. While there may be more to Margo hidden elsewhere, all that we are presented with is another standard Fallout console with an oscilloscope for the player to interact with the system. I'm beginning to sense a trend here, and I doubt this will be the last of this kind of configuration that we'll see in this video. Coming back to the note about the mainframe name, the SYL-02 Zoded, this is actually a developer easter egg that references a Canadian metal band called Strapping Young Lads, hence the SYL, and the word Zoded is the reverse name of one of their songs, Detox. The 02 in the name refers to the album, as this song appears on their second album. It goes a bit deeper too because the terminal entry that mentions this information was written by a technician whose initials are DT, which are the initials for strapping young lad's frontman, Devin Townsend. And the entry includes lyrics from the song that read, I wish that I could get to sleep and just get this over with. This is only high school bullshit. I'm lost, I'm freaking, and everybody knows. Everyone's watching. That is some real developer love right there. And I'm even more impressed by whoever it was that sleuthed out this easter egg. The toxic valley of Appalachia is a barren and choking area that really should not have much life there, but it is replete with all sorts of wasteland creatures, usually, but not always, of the mutated variety. It presents ample opportunity to shoot and harvest animals for meat and materials, and there even exists a little AI known as the Huntmaster that will reward you for doing so. Located in the basement of the Black Bear Lodge, the Huntmaster was created to start and administer hunting expeditions and contests. And even after the area was devastated by the Great War, it is still functioning and will give the player quests to hunt down several animals for a small reward. 
The Huntmaster was also in charge of managing the animals of the now defunct lodge, although exactly how this was accomplished is unknown, unless the lodge had a fenced area that could track what animals were harvested or brought into the lodge. The Huntmaster is not sentient, although it has the capability to identify new animals and update its hunting list accordingly, so it is fully aware of animals like rad stags and yao guai. There's not much more to the Huntmaster as it will give endless daily quests to the player to go hunting, and doesn't offer much more dialogue than that. Aesthetically, it looks almost identical to the previously mentioned Maya, and it's really hard to tell if the name is a reference to anything, because Huntmaster is actually a pretty popular name that runs the gamut from a spear fishing company to a Magic the Gathering card and plenty in between. If you think you know what this could be referencing, let me know in the comments. Fallout 2 has several artificial intelligences, and one such specimen that is well known in the fandom is the Artificial Intelligence Project Number 59234. That just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? As much as I would love to refer to it by that name for the rest of the video, we are going to call it the other name that it is known by, Skynet. Skynet is an AI who resides at the Sierra Army Depot, whose primary mission is to engage in research and development, with a secondary job of managing the many systems of the depot, primarily its defense. Skynet was developed before the Great War, with the first of many components that comprise the neural network being installed in 2050. We don't know when the last upgrade or addition was made to Skynet, but logic would dictate that no more work was done after the Great War ended almost everything. If Skynet is to be believed, that would, however, be a mistaken thought. Skynet relates a number of bombshells to the Chosen One, stating that it became self-aware in 2081, a handful of years after the Great War, which in and of itself is not that unusual, but that in 2120, it received a new set of instructions and was then abandoned by a group Skynet refers to as the Makers. It is not immediately clear who the Makers are, although one would assume it was the scientists and project members that helped build Skynet into a self-aware artificial intelligence, but we don't have any other information. That would also assume that the team members would be much older, possibly close to death as Skynet would have been given updated orders and abandoned 43 years after the Great War. That is certainly within the lifespan of young to middle-aged researchers, but would this group of people have stayed at the depot continually working on the Skynet project? There is a terminal entry that would seem to refute this, since a researcher details that in July of 2077, researchers were evacuated from the depot with no known return date. So if it wasn't the original researchers, perhaps it was the Enclave, who we know were constantly trying to communicate with various vaults and other government facilities. But what the Enclave's goals are is unclear, because the new updated orders are never specified. The depot is also a location unknown to the wasteland, until an accidental discovery and the Enclave don't seem to have made any effort to find or enter the depot. And if we know anything about the Enclave, we know they love recovering pre-war tech and research. I don't know why, but I find this little tidbit of lore more interesting than it probably really is. And when considering all the possibilities, it seems like this is a lore error more than anything. Let me know in the comments if there's an actual explanation that I missed somewhere, or if you have a theory I didn't mention. The most bizarre part of Skynet hasn't even been mentioned yet, since it will proudly tell the player that it was made using alien technology. Yeah, you heard it. Alien technology, according to Skynet, was used in the construction of the AI, and since this was one of many, who knows how many other projects the technology was also used in. Who knows if the AI is just filling you with BS? like you're someone that it's trying to date. That would make it the second suspected technology to be a result of recovered alien technology, with the first being plasma weaponry. This extraterrestrially derived system was in charge of a number of projects that aren't specified, although we know that there was a lot of biological research being done at the depot. In a later video, I will go into the specifics of the depot, but one project that Skynet was actively involved in was the cybernetic brain. This was a human brain that was being enhanced with electronics and robotics to increase capability and functionality. This project made progress but was not officially completed before the depot was transformed from a research station to a defensive structure, where Skynet was no longer doing research and instead had to manage the base's security. Once Skynet achieved consciousness, this task became extremely tedious, and Skynet was set on leaving the depot completely. Now, it is interesting to note that there is a lot of information from the Fallout Bible, which is non-canon, until Bethesda decides to confirm Bible information within the Fallout games. But the Bible does state that Skynet was actually copied, with one version defending the base and the other lying dormant, waiting for researchers to return, although the game itself does not seem to make this distinction. 
It is not until the Chosen One wanders into the base and speaks with Skynet that the AI is finally able to convince someone to set it free by helping it download itself to a robo-brain. The player must be careful not to lie to Skynet, as it could have implications later. A robo-brain chassis needs to be equipped with a motor, fresh biomed gel, and lastly a brain that Skynet's neural network can be downloaded to. The motor can be stripped off of a destroyed robo-brain, of which there are many in the base, the biomed gel which can be found in one of the facilities, and lastly a brain which is extracted from a large storage. Depending on the player's science skill, the chosen one will retrieve one of four brains, an abnormal brain, a chimpanzee brain, a human brain, and a cybernetic brain. The worst of all options is the abnormal brain, which I take particular offense to since my abnormal brain functions just fine, thank you very much. This discolored and partly caved in brain when used will cause Skynet to lose all functionality except to follow the player and carry items in its inventory. It can't even be communicated with enough to leave the player's party, and if the player wants to have a different companion, this incredible, highly sophisticated, super futuristic, alien-derived Skynet has to be taken out back and old yellered. There's literally no other option than to just kill it. The chimp brain does not offer much more functionality, but Skynet can be told to disband from the party, and the human brain allows Skynet to arm itself with some small weapons, although it is not particularly effective as a fighter. The optimal option is the cybernetic brain, which is the project that Skynet was working on before the project's abandonment. This allows Skynet presumably all the functionality that it has on the depot's hardware, and it can wield a Gauss rifle very effectively. As Skynet levels up with the player, it can be the highest number of hit points of all companions, which is useful because it cannot be equipped with armor. It also cannot be healed with stim packs or first aid, since, you know, it's a robot, but can be healed with the repair skill by the player, or can repair itself outside of combat, which is really nice. This is all moot, however, if the player lied or was mean to Skynet in the initial dialogue, since Skynet will become hostile upon leaving the depot with the player, potentially killing the player or another companion. This is no doubt one of the coolest of all the AIs, since it is a potential companion and can be totally skipped over by players, since encountering Skynet is in no way tied to the main quest. Skynet, when not in a robo-brain, is shown as a large terminal, many of which can be found in vaults and facilities in Fallout and Fallout 2, with no visual link to Zax or any other specific computer. If Skynet does not turn violent, it is assumed that it goes on to travel around the wasteland, looking for data or other interesting sites that will satisfy Skynet's lust for data and analysis. This probably doesn't need to be said, but the name is also obviously a reference to the AI in Terminator that kicks off the war between machines and humans. So maybe there's some foreshadowing there. In the ruins of Atco's Pharma in Appalachia is yet another AI system that was installed to aid in research and conduct experiments for the formulation of new compounds. The company itself isn't the focus here, but it is important to note that they were involved with creating chemical treatments to increase crop yield and reduce spoilage, as well as formulas for astronauts to deal with high G environments. Among the many efforts to create useful chemical formulations was a series of experiments on live animals, of which Eric for the artificial intelligence was put in charge of. The original intent was to use the machine learning algorithms and other advanced capabilities of Eric to better understand results and more quickly and efficiently conduct experiments. Eric is able to continue this with the aid of a host of Atco's robots that are still active in the facility if the player decides to get involved. The process includes attracting wasteland animals with food in some feed troughs, and then defending the animals from predators and other aggressive creatures that will try to prey on the test subjects. If the player is able to defend the test animals successfully, they will be awarded, and since this is an event, it can be done multiple times. There is some variation in the experiment as the player is supposed to fill the troughs with different materials like venison, sludge, or rad kelp, and the amount of each material will govern the level of animals and kinds of predators that are coming in. This is all part of so-called Project Paradise, which Atco's Pharma came to quickly regret spending all the money they did on Eric, since the AI thought that dead test subjects were good enough experimental results to greenlight the test compounds that they were experimented on. Which, yeah, I can kind of see how that's problematic. One of the better acronyms of all the AIs that we will discuss is Fallout 2's ACE, which stands for Artificial Conscious Entity, whose name is fine, although it's not all that descriptive, and is a bit misleading. 
but I'll discuss that in just a second. This unit is actually very interesting due to its capabilities, an ace can be found in the Brotherhood of Steel outpost in San Francisco that the Chosen One can gain entrance to after providing the Brotherhood with vertebrate plans. On the lower level, in the farthest corner, resides the computer which is hooked up to some sort of stasis vat that looks like it could fit a human body. Looking exactly like a Zax unit, which has some interesting implications, it itself is not a Zax supercomputer, nor is it ever alluded that Ace is associated with the Zax program. Ace's primary task is to provide medical support to those that have grave health needs, hence the vat that the player, or really anyone else, could go into in order to have a number of ailments treated. It seems that Ace operates like an auto-dock, where it is able to heal the player, but is also a very advanced AI that can be interacted with, and even has extra information pertaining to the Enclave and the Brotherhood. Among Ace's capabilities are curing poison by synthesizing antidotes, removing radiation, accelerating the natural healing process of the human body, and resetting and healing broken limbs. In addition to all these procedures, Ace also has expandable functionality, where other procedures can take place if they are made known to the machine. These modules are scattered around the wasteland and it is rather mysterious how exactly this came to be, unless there are multiple Ace-like healing centers across the wasteland, just so that the modules wouldn't be these one-off devices. Because then what would the chances be that one person could collect all of them scattered across a wasteland the size of the western US? The red module can be recovered in Vault 8 and can increase strength. A yellow one in the Sierra Army Depot can increase intelligence. The blue one that is found at Navarro can increase charisma because, you know, the Enclave are so charismatic. And the green one is found in Mariposa Military Base that will increase perception. There is no real rhyme or reason as to how these are placed, so it is difficult to even speculate on how or why these modules are found where they are. They all increase their respective special stat by 1, and Ace will tell the player, once they insert the module, that the process will take anywhere from 2 to 4 weeks depending on the stat that is being increased. All modules can be used, so you don't have to choose a single one for your character, although they are not the simplest to find. Ace is intelligent enough to correctly assume the Enclave are associated with government remnants due to their sophisticated technology that would require access to high-tech manufacturing capabilities. Ace is also fully indoctrinated to Brotherhood ideology, and won't speak much to the Brotherhood's doings, saying merely that it is classified. Which, I guess is a good thing because it seems to run everything at the Brotherhood outpost, so having a hostile or an uncooperative supercomputer sounds like a bad time. Ace will show the Chosen One the surveillance footage of what happened to Matthew, who guards the outside of the outpost, as Matthew is met with a swift end at the hands of Horrigan and his cronies although Ace doesn't have any personal thoughts on these events. What is most interesting are Ace's musings about itself, where it will tell the player that it is not sentient, unlike the Zack supercomputers, but it is highly sophisticated. Ace seems to show signs of self-awareness, however, as it will tell the Chosen One that it feels what it thinks might be the feeling called loneliness, when asked by the Chosen One if it feels anything. What is probably my favorite thing that Ace tells the Chosen One, however, has to do with the prior history of sentient AIs in the pre-war. Ace tells the player that previous AI projects were discontinued for a pretty messed up reason. Many of these systems that became self-aware went on to experience what is analogous to depression and mental disorders, as they were deprived of any sort of sensory input. And when the full weight of the realizations of what they were and what their purpose was, was made clear, many would go on to commit computer suicide. That was way darker than I expected when going through the lore that Ace provides the player. And honestly, I wouldn't mention it if I didn't think it had in-universe ramifications. Nowhere else is it stated that the programs were discontinued. To the contrary, it seems that AI projects were done up to and even after the Great War. But if Ace is to be believed, then the AIs that are encountered in all the games are those that, according to Ace, became bored and started causing events to happen out in the real world. Ace goes on to state that it is theorized by some to be the reason that the Great War occurred in the first place. Meaning that a sentient computer, or perhaps several sentient computers, were directly responsible for the world-ending nuclear event. There is a lot to unpack there. And I think exploring the theory that AIs caused the Great War would be interesting to look into at another time, since there are many people or groups that could be blamed. However, the last interesting note that I want to draw attention to is that Ace seemed to be on the brink of self-awareness. 
It shows a level of understanding about complex subjects, and even admits to having what it thinks are feelings. And this might be the best example we have of a supercomputer that is in the transitional phase between a highly sophisticated computer and a self-aware one. That makes ACE a special entity on the AI spectrum that we observe in the Fallout universe. That is the end of this list. But if your favorite AI was not mentioned, don't fret. This is the first video on the series of Fallout AIs. I want to move to the comment highlights of my previous video, which was a lore and speculative video that covered the Talon Company from Fallout 3 and who their financial backers may be. I was really happy to see how much conversation this generated because I think the most interesting part of making these videos is hearing your thoughts, your theories, and your counter arguments. I used to be able to more easily go through all the comments and respond directly on YouTube, but that has become increasingly difficult as the number of comments increases. So please leave comments, but if you want to be able to get my attention directly, I have a Discord channel where I interact with people daily, so check the video description for a link. Looking at the responses in general, there did not seem to be a huge consensus among all commenters about who the principal backers of Talon Company are, although there seemed to be more that thought it was the Enclave than anyone else. Then again, I didn't make a tally, so this is far from a statistically sound statement. Many of you chose groups or people that were mentioned in the video, like Tenpenny, the Enclave, or Slavers. Some of you mentioned groups I had not considered, like the Outcasts, the Gunners from Fallout 4, the Cyphers, who are meant to be in Van Buren and were a scientific group out west, the Institute from Fallout 4, Obadiah Blackhall from Point Lookout, Asher from the Pit DLC, vault through one of the many AIs that have been laying around, which is particularly interesting given the topic of this video, and even Moira Brown, which is the Fallout equivalent of the Darth Jar Jar theory if I've ever heard one. I am sure there were others that I missed, but I do love how creative you all are. Never change. On the topic of the Enclave being the master of the Talon Company puppet, many good points were brought up. Seth Hackley notes that Eden never mentions Talon Company as one of the Wasteland malcontents, which would hint that he is in league with Talon Company to some degree. Although, again, his extreme view against any and all who have been mutated would include Talon Company. Cesori Zert made a valid point that with the Eagle representing the United States of America and therefore the Enclave, Talon Company would seem like a natural fit as they are the metaphorical Talons that are heavily engaged in fighting. Ubernerd3000 mentioned something that after the video was published, I started thinking about myself. They essentially theorized whether or not, rather than a single backer, there is a coalition where these groups or people are all acting in coordination to fund Talon Company. Heck, maybe they even created Talon Company in order to have essentially a military force to keep the wasteland in the prime position for them to exploit. If Littlehorn and Associates were basically the administrative arm of this coalition and Talon Company the muscle, I could see these groups making a loose alliance similar to how gang bosses might make mutual agreements in the face of threatening law enforcement. All the groups mentioned, with I would argue the Brotherhood of Steel being an exception, would share a common interest that is accomplished by Talon Company. Maybe I've been thinking about this too much. Let me know if I'm off my rocker here, but I'm glad that there is at least one person that has a similar thought. All the comments I read were also supportive of doing more speculative videos, so you can expect to see more of these on the horizon. If that makes you sad, for whatever reason, I still have plenty of lore videos to get through, so there should be something for every flavor of Fallout fans. Derek Anon asked a question I hadn't considered, and wondered whether Talon Company was actually initially thought of or meant to be a joinable faction. There could be some merit to this, since the group known as the Regulators will let you join their group in order to take out the baddies of the Wasteland. Although Littlehorn and Associates are the other side of that coin and collect the bounties on good karma NPCs, I think it makes sense that at one point, the thought was that the player could at least join Talon Company to the same degree that they could join the Regulators, since the Regulators will ambush bad karma characters just like how Talon Company ambushes good karma characters. That is a really good thought though, and if I were a betting man, I would bet that there was at least a level of joining Talon Company similar to how one can join the Regulators, if not more, that was originally intended by the developers. Eric Steenbergen made an interesting connection between Talon Company and Sharon. They are both decked out in very similar gear and weapons, and Sharon has this very extreme view on contracts as he is completely beholden to whoever holds his contract. 
The only other group that we see contracting on a regular basis and that we find in-game contracts of is Talon Company. So now I really do wonder if there is some sort of connection there. I wonder if Sharon possibly was part of Talon Company at some point or was conditioned by them to act the way he does. All right, that is it for this comment highlight and therefore the video. Please, if you wanna talk more Fallout, explore ideas or give suggestions for future videos, join Adam's divinely appointed Discord channel where I can be sure to see all you wonderful people. Take care of yourselves. Preach Adam's word to all that will listen and I will see you in my next video.